stolen from me. We may have you to share some things because her mom said there was pressure from other parents about her lifestyle what made her feel like she was an inadequate parent because of what her daughter was doing. And as a church, we need to have standards and understand how to stand with someone who has a child who's going through something. Today on Living by Faith. There's the whole balance, balance part to where I was ending a relationship. The re relationship went bad and the dude had a gun to my head. And he was like, the only reason why I'm not going to police it is because I don't, wanna, I don't want your mom to, to, um, to hurt. So, you know, so the balance is real. The deception is real. Everything about it is just drama. Everything about it is real. Over the guys. So, you know, after being in a couple of bad relationships because, you know, at the um, age of 15, when I had my first relationship with a guy, you know, my uh, virginity was taken from me by force. He raped me. Oh, wow. And yes, and after the rape, I still continued to have sex with this guy because my self-esteem was so low. So then when I had got my second boyfriend at the age of 17, and that went pretty well at the beginning, but then, you know, he started tripping. <laughs> so I had to like, you know, X that relationship and just said, I'm just going to deal with the females. And it wasn't not because, you know, a lot of people say because, you know, females, they know how each other feel and they are sensitive to each other. It's just that that's something that I had always, you know, con <coughs> considered, you know, indulging in right, right, at right. a young age. So, so would you bring the boyfriend, mama was aware of the boyfriend, but she wasn't aware of the girlfriend? No, not aware of the girlfriend. So, you know, my mom, she didn't find out that I was liking women until I was 30. And because I, you know, was, you know, real discreet with it, you know, keeping it hidden. You know, certain people knew, but none of my family and not my mom, just friends. So wow, you were pretty good at it. So you were considered a closet. Yes, it was like living two lives, and it was like getting a little difficult. And that's what I, when I talk to teens, I tell teens, you know, sex is like, um, the analogy that I would use when I talk to teens about sex is about a video game. Because you know how they play the video game, and then how they go from one level to the next, and it advances itself and advances itself. That's a good analogy. And you get and a that's what happens into it even in that. I call it the law of it. diminishing returns. Yes. When something ceases to satisfy one area, you search for more. Yes. So those games let you in at the entry level, and then you constantly progress through as you advance. And that's how this whole sexual activity thing. You start with holding hands and maybe just kissing and flirting and playing these games, and then it just leads to other areas. Yes, and leads to other areas. Cause you know, like, you know, I'm getting tired of this, but let me try this. And then I start doing things that I wouldn't even imagine that I was doing and yeah. how long I was in it. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I would just, you know, tell, you know, the parents, you know, you know, to talk to your children and, you know, and see where they are. Because I have nieces and nephews and I talk to them all the time. And they know about, you know, the lifestyle that I used to live and they know where I'm at now. So communicating is essential for parents and children as such. You work in our children's ministry now. Yes. Been set free for how long? Eight years Eight now. years? Yes. I love it. I love it. And Mama brought you to this ministry at age 30, you said? You, you and your mother came no, together? Or? No, I walked in these doors by myself. I okay. Was, I was actually, I, was, I joined Spirit of Faith in 97. Okay. And I was still in a lifestyle then. Okay. But I didn't get connected with anyone. That's why I think the discipleship program that you're embarking us on is, is critical because wow. I didn't get connected with anyone and I left 
and came back 10 years later. Wow. So it'll be, next month will be eight years since I've been here. But wow. when I came through the doors at 2006, I was still in the lifestyle and still living with the female that I was with for almost four years. Isn't that something? And would you bring her to church with you? Um, initially what happened was when I told her that, you know, I wanted to get out of this lifestyle because I had a, you know, a desire, you know, to want to change. And she came here with me for a while and then eventually she branched off and I just, you know, continued to call her and, you know, and ask her, you know, when you're coming back to church and everything. And eventually I just stopped calling her because I was like, I, she wasn't ready. Now, Jenny, she said you came to church with your girlfriends. Yeah, I, I would come as well. And just said, well, I think you would come too. <laughs> <laughs> Gentel met the girl. T tell us your story. Um, I was 15 at the time, and I'd already had some curiosity about the lifestyle. And my mom and I didn't have the greatest relationship. But there was a female here at the time. I was in SWAT, and we had exchanged numbers. And one thing just kind of led to another. And next thing you know, this was already something that she was already doing. And so it was easier for me because I had that interest to fall into it. And behold, I fell into it. And even after that relationship, it was another church relationship. Um, I met somebody here again and joining that relationship with them. Wait a minute, the second relationship as well was of a member of this church? Yes. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, go, go right ahead. Even after that, um, I've even- And I've, that's why, I, you know, it, this, this is an age old thing here. This is nothing new. It didn't start with Spirit of Faith Christian Center. When I came, when I attended my father's church, you know where our spot was? Up in the balcony. We were going in the balcony. There was no accountability. I would leave my parents. I would be involved in all kinds of things at church where my, where my parents were leading the church. And a lot of the parents come here, drop their children off, just think that this is an entirely safe environment, that they don't have any kind of accountability. They sit around, they do nothing, they get involved, and the parents leave here, they're working in church, and you're coming to church losing your family. And so they got to be a level of accountability. You can't go anywhere in life because the devil is running rampant. Folks, these are the last days. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't consider any place to be safe other than in the will of God. And if, in fact, as parents, we're not sharing the will of God with our children, they may be open to all kinds of things. Come on, talk to me, Jindale. Um, I failed to mention on the other panels also that my mother was the drama ministry here, and she had did a play, um, and I played the gay girl at the time. And that kind of more so opened me to be more comfortable because everybody had already saw me in that light. It made it more easier for me to go ahead and come out that way. And so after having met the young lady here, I went ahead, was in that relationship, and even all the way up until last year when I denounced the lifestyle, um, I was challenged after GGG, someone that was at the conference, um, actually challenged me like a month later. And my, my attack just really has been in the church. Wow. But you were considered like the... the I was the dominant female. The dominant female. Mm -hmm. You were like the male... In the relationship, In the relationship. Yes. Now, I, it, 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 still, it, it still baffles me why you want a woman, but you want a woman with a man tendencies. I, I, so you were supposed to take care of the woman. Like, yes. And in taking care or trying to take care of women... I was broke. I was real broke. What? I was broke. You was? <laughs> <laughs> so she had her a broke chick. You were broke. <laughs> but you said something quite intriguing that you were never designed yes, I as a woman to take care of another woman. Yes, um, after having gone through a lot of what we all here have been through a lot of things, um, dealing with the lifestyle of homosexuality that we probably never saw ourselves dealing with, um, I came to grips with myself and realized that God never ordained me and he never equipped for me to take care of a woman. He never equipped you 
to take care of a woman. Yes. Isn't that awesome? And that, re that realization helped you with your transition. Yes. Now, now Cora, if you're, you're quite interesting because that picture alone was quite interesting. But you were like a few steps away from having a total sex change. That is true. Talk to me. Started back when I was a kid. I grew up in a broken home where I saw my family uh, fight pretty much every day. So domestic violence was very real to me. That's your mom and dad. Mom and dad. Uh, when it got to the point to where, uh, so it does matter what the parents are doing in the home. It, it does matter. It do. So the family broke up. Uh, my sister and I we went to go live with my grandparents. There was an older cousin in the home, and my older cousin uh, every night was sexually abused me, he would try, you know, try to have sex with me. And then I got to the point to where I couldn't take it no more and I tried to fight him off. So when I finally fought him off, I caught him one day on top of my little sister. And I've always been a wow. protector of my little sister. Wow, wow, wow. And so his words to me were, if I can't have you, I'll have her. So I gave myself to him to protect my little sister. So I was already dealing with those issues as a young kid. And then I've always, you know, as I got older, I dated girls, I've always had it. Had Why time. couldn't you tell anyone what was going on? I fear, mean, I, shame. Fear, shame. I mean, I was like maybe eight years old, eight or nine What years would old. you tell a child today who's possibly going through that? What, 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 what do they do? Run, tell it. Run and tell it. Tell it. They're to going anyone. to be okay. They're going to be okay. Trust me, you will be okay. You will be okay. So, you know, dealing with all of that, you know, um, and just kind of confused in, in, in who I am, who I, who I was, you know, not knowing my true identity, that my true identity was in Christ Jesus. So, you know, I got to a point to where I couldn't take the lifestyle no more. I didn't want the lifestyle anymore. And I, you know, I, I, I reached out, I found a church and the discipling piece that you've been teaching on is so important because there was a lady who identified me, who knew where I was at, and she invited me into her home. And I was like, you know, who do that? Who invite a total stranger into their home and expose them to their kids and, and to their whole family? But she saw something greater in me than I even saw in myself. And so a woman at church recognizes that you're going through what you're going through. And she relates a complete stranger. And she brings you into her home and begins to disciple you and, and love you? Exactly. And, and I, didn't, I didn't share it at 8 o'clock, but that lady now today is standing on the same words that she spoke into my life because years after I've been delivered, set free, her daughter now is in the lifestyle and has been married. So she has to every day renew her hope because she know that, there is, that the, that the wor same words that she spoke over my life are going to manifest in her own daughter's life. And so you said you were really just seeking for someone to love you, like your father loving you or... Just wanted somebody. And, that, and that's, that's pretty much how it is. I mean, with all of us, like, we just wanted to be loved. We wanted to be accepted. And if you don't get that love or that acceptance from the church or from your family, you're going to get it from the world because they are so easily ready to embrace you. It's a false sense of love, but it's love. Um, it's, it's the only thing that we can really identify. And, you know, we talked about, you know, not making the lifestyle so glamorous. Well, to, to someone who's seeking that type of attention, it is very glamorous. I remember my first time going to a club, I was like, wow. This is what I've been missing. I mean, at that moment, I felt like I was free. And, you know, and so in every, and that's the deception. And every, like, like um, Naja was saying, the, um, and all of us were pretty much saying, the more you indulge in it, the more you become, um, you know, attached to it. And it makes Entangle. it harder. Yeah. Entangled. And it makes it harder. Because when I first started, I never intended to, like, put my whole life into it. Like, I lost myself, you know. I was never, I never thought about cross-dressing or doing anything like that, but the people that I was hanging out with, they, you know, they did that. And a lot of them was changing their, uh, their, their sexual, uh, 
it, it was changed over from becoming a man to a woman. And so that just seemed exciting to me because then I started to feel like I was a, a woman trapped into a man's body. And, um, you know, it, it, was just, it was just crazy. And so, like DeMarco was saying, they don't show all of that. You know, the media don't, don't show all of that. You know, there's a lot of deception behind it. There's a lot of darkness behind it. A lot of balance. A lot of balance behind it. Um, even in that, I experienced the whole balance, balance part to where I was ending a relationship. The re relationship went bad, and the dude had a gun to my head. And he was like, the only reason why I'm not going to police it is because I don't, wanna, I don't want your mom to, to, um, to hurt. So, you know, so the balance is real. The deception is real. Everything about it is just drama. Everything about it is real. Najee, you said you had to come and tell your mother and father one day. You just had to come to the point where you had to make that known. T t share with us. And that was the, the, the struggle because, you know, like Vicky said, you're trying to live two different lives. You know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm around my parents and I'm trying to be careful. Like, oh, don't, don't say you did this or wow. don't say this. So it's a challenge trying to go in and, uh, you know, and put on a different face. And so kids today who are at the brink of making this decision, you know where they are and they're, they mm -hmm. are kind of going back and forth. Mm -hmm. They got to do this around right. mom and dad. Right. But now this way, share a little bit about that and then tell us about your mom and dad. What, what's your advice to a child or to anyone who's being challenged now? They're at the brink of making this decision. Not everyone knows mm -hmm. and they're living dual lives. If, if I could tell, if I could give myself advice at that time, it would have just been to be honest. Uh, because, you know, I wasn't being honest with myself, I wasn't being honest, so I couldn't get any help. And in, in my mind it was, you know, I've got this, I can do this, and that's kind of always been my personality, is like, you know, I can take on this challenge, and you know, my parents have always encouraged me to, you know, talk to us. The only way that we can help you is if you're honest and you talk to us. And although, you know, they told me that, and a lot of you may be telling your kids that, uh, you can never tell them that enough, you know, and, you know, it, the day that I finally, you know, spoke to my parents and told them even that I was out of the lifestyle was because of the fact that they kept the open communication. So how'd you do that? How'd well, you tell them? Well, uh, I took them out to, a, to a, a restaurant not too far from this area, and I set them down at the time. Why, why a restaurant, you said? I was nervous, you know, I wanted to be in a public place just in case, like, <laughs> something popped off, you know, and my, my, my parents have never, like, you know, done anything crazy, but I had never told them what I was about to tell them, so I had no idea how they were going to react. And, you know, my mom, she was, you know, very emotional, you know, she wanted to understand why I think, uh, you know, as a parent, you try to, uh, you know, find out why, like point the blame, like is it something that I particularly wow. did? Wow. So that was her biggest question was like, you know. She said her dreams were being shattered uh, uh, as it relates to your life mm -hmm. and, and what she raised you to become, mm -hmm. a wife, a, a grandmother, because who knows right. at this point. And, and, and a lot of times a parent can look at what's more important to them than their child. And she said herself that she had to turn her interests outwardly and go after her daughter, regardless of what she was sensing from the outside. Right. Okay, uh, go, go on. Uh, my dad was very calm. And that is, uh, my dad is pretty, uh, he's not a soft-spoken person at all. So, you know, even when he's talking about something that's not really serious, my dad's always loud. And uh, he was silent, you know, he didn't say anything, and you know, I was kind of looking or waiting for this reaction. <laughs> you were waiting for him to yeah. just blow Break up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bracing, bracing the table to see, and uh, he told me that he wasn't surprised. He said, Holy Spirit, I uh, had told him months in advance that I, was that I was struggling in this particular area. And just like, you know, some of the other, uh, you know, members up here, you know, my dad, both his brother and his sister are in the lifestyle, you know, I have lots of different family members, so as a kid growing up, you know, it wasn't something that my parents didn't discuss. They were saying, this is the lifestyle, uh, you know, my uncle, you know, is, is living, uh, you know, now with, with a disease based upon the fact of a choice and decision that he made. And my parents were letting us know, like, you know, you live and die by the choices that you make. And the best thing I can tell you is to, you know, is to make good choices and to help you in that area. So, you know, I shared it with my parents. My dad told me Holy Spirit had, had already spoken to him about it. And we went to the word, you know, he didn't, you know, tell me how he felt, 
We, he, on. The only thing he said he could tell me was the word. Come and on. Uh, one thing, you know, he said this morning was he had to really uh, extend his faith. And he said that if, you know, if God can't keep you, then you can't be kept. And he had faith. And that's where his trust was. And that's where his trust was. So I, and at the time when he went over the world with me, he told me the, the story of the prodigal son. And, you know, we went into Romans uh, 1. And, you know, at the time I didn't want to hear any of that. You Romans know? 1 discusses this lifestyle. Yes, it talks about the nature of, of man and how. And it's so because when he told me what, you know, what was going to come from it, I was in such denial. But as it started to play out, because my dad was like, how you start to twist the word and, you know, I would look in the Bible and, um, you know, wow. and say, oh, you know, God said this and did this. And my dad was like, you know, this is what the word says. And, you know, kind of kind of left it at that. And, you know, that's how I was able to come. DeMarco, up. you said your mom or your parents or or even you had one scripture that it, it held her together. Um, I think the scripture for it. Well, actually, my mom actually stood on was Second Corinthians 418. And it says, while we look not at the things what are seen, as to the things which are unseen, for the things that are seen are temporal. That's good stuff. They're subject to change, yeah. but the things that I cannot see are eternal. And so th that scripture alone was enough to be able to have her look past what her circumstances were at that particular time. Well, uh, unlike a lot of them, mine started at three years old. I was wearing, wearing my mother's shoes and clothes dressing up in a mirror and my grandmother would just lay on the bed and laugh like he just having fun and seeds were being uh planted then here i am years later and now i'm cross-dressing doing coke and doing all this other well, kind of crazy i gotta stop stuff. you and tell you there were moments when i said what in god's name is on that boy's mind but one thing that has been prevalent here in this discussion has been the love of god and we would just release the love of God into your life. I remember you came up to the altar dressed, I mean, like a woman, but slightly a man's attire. I mean, you had bracelets and earrings and, and makeup on, and I'm sitting there, and this boy's hands are lifted to God, crying out to God. And the Spirit of God had me to take my water and pour it on on the, the handkerchief that I had and started just wiping all of this makeup off of him at the time. He began to pull off, you know, earrings and bracelets and all this kind of stuff. I mean, Mac makeup rolling on the floor and <laughs> breathing, breathing. Look, that's Mac NC45. <laughs> the wealth of the wicked is being trained. <laughs> but the thing that has been you know, the predominant kind of factor in place has been the love of God. And one thing Gina said, she gave your family members instructions on how to handle you because a part of the family can't be embracing it, saying, okay, it's all right, your mama doesn't understand, da, da, da. Matter of fact, you went into business with your partner. We opened and up. your mama didn't even go to the... Grand opening. opening. Actually, none of my, my, my brothers uh, came to the, to the grand opening, but none of my other family members came. They still show their support. They sent me um, a dozen of white roses. Whenever I do something, my parents always give me white roses. So they didn't show, but they sent a card just saying that, you know, they love me. Uh, you know, they're, they're always in my corner. But why couldn't you go, Gina? I mean, tell me, tell me about that because you may want to attend something that your child is having, but because you know it's diametrically opposed to the word of God, and you can't have some church members say, well, I don't agree with what Gina and Michael is doing, and they are wrong, they should go to, well, t give, me, give me that. That was, that was really difficult because my husband gave me specific things to stand on. And then oh, oh, Jesus, I just, ooh, Jesus, ooh, Jesus. With my spiritual kids, I told this church the position that they should have 
on whether or not they should support my spiritual children who did something that I didn't want them to do. And if y'all remember that, I had the family. I said, this is how you stand, and this is how you're so supposed to support, and what makes it any different in her household than this house? Well, we just want to go show our support. Well, if part of her family members are going to go and support and not stand with them, then you send them mixed messages to this child about this family that some of us are going to support you regardless of what daddy says. Oh, I'm preaching good Amen. right now. Amen. Don't shout me down while I'm preaching good Amen. here. So there's no difference in this micro family than this macro family or the, 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 the biological family or the family of God. And she had a position. Her husband had to give her position on how to stand with her own daughter. Yes, and that it, was most difficult. Very difficult, because this is my only daughter. And when she came out with this information, I had had dreams, my sister had dreams, my husband, my mother had had dreams. So we specifically, especially when it came to Thanksgiving, because she wanted to bring her partner to Thanksgiving. We were having it at my, my mother-in-law's. And so she was like, okay, baby, you know, when they're over 70, they just agree to stuff. <laughs> so we had to call I, her back. Wait a minute. She didn't mean that, folks, about <laughs> <laughs> the over 70 people. She, she loved said. her grandbaby. She loved her grandbaby. And so we had to specifically give her stuff that she, we, we told her that it's okay for you to come, but your partner cannot come. Wow. You know, we love you. You can take her a plate, but you're gonna come in because we're not gonna support that type of lifestyle. So come on in, let's make the sweet potatoes and things. You can bring somebody a plate, but she can't come. And, that and that is hard. Yes. That is hard. I that cry. is hard. But that is still love. That, that's still love. You cannot look at it as not being love because even God, he loved his son so much when the sins of this world got on his only begotten son, God had to turn his back. We're by you can live your best life now. Order the Lifestyle Package featuring What Faith in a Man Can Do, Integrity Below the Belt, and Marriage Made Easy in 31 Days, and learn all you need about faith, sexual purity, and marriage. To order this package or any item in it, call 1-888-630-4540. And they don't want to come out of their relationships with the females or the males that they're dealing with to save their own child. And we're talking about heterosexual relationships as well yeah. that you're referring to. Yeah. You're living a sinful life and you're expecting your kids to live a godly life. Yeah, so I you know, tell them, you know, if you line up, you will see God manifest in your family. Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to become a Living by Faith Partner of Purpose today. We thank you for your financial support, which has enabled this program to bless millions around the world. You are helping us to make it happen.